Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Topjoy Falcon, which is a tiny little laptop with an 8-inch display, and as you can see, it ships with Windows 10. Now, this is a prototype that was sent to me for testing purposes. It has an unactivated version of Windows 10. Full retail version should have a activated Windows license. Um, but you can also insert a USB flash drive and boot from an alternate operating system or install an alternate OS if you would prefer to do that. Uh, all you need to do is restart the computer and go into the BIOS or UEFI settings by hitting de the delete key. Um, it's a little bit tricky to do that. You might have to try it a couple of different times before you get in. So I, once I did get in, I went ahead and disabled fast boot, disabled secure boot, and changed the boot order priority so that I can insert a USB flash drive and boot from that. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different options here. This is a drive that has Ubuntu 18.10, which was uh, just released recently as of the time of this video. And I'm just going to go ahead and restart the computer and show you Ubuntu, which doesn't work perfectly out of the box, but it does load. So let's start with that. It's one of the more popular Linux distributions. Now the first thing you might notice here is that the grub boot menu is sideways, and the second thing you might notice is that the text is really, really tiny. Uh, so that top option there says try Ubuntu without installing. We'll go ahead and do that. As a device that ships with Windows 10, it's sort of uh, all the drivers, everything that you need are, are included for Windows 10. So pen support works in Windows 10, the little optical touch sensor, the touch screen, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, and everything. Um, most of those things seem to work with Ubuntu, but not everything, as I'll show you in a moment here, uh, works as well as it could. So in addition to the Grub bootloader being sideways, you might notice that the Ubuntu splash screen is also sideways. And when the operating system loads, it's upside down. So there's a fairly easy fix for this, um, and that is to open a terminal and type this command, x-r-a-n-d-r -R space hyphen o space right. Now it's interesting that telling it to rotate 90 degrees to the right makes it rotate 270 degrees. I'm not really sure what's up with that, but it works. I'm going to go ahead and brighten the screen here because we get a little bit of flicker, the interaction between the display refresh rate and the camera that I'm using. Um, again, this is a prototype, so the finished unit is going to have automatic screen detection so that if you flip the screen over, because it is a convertible, uh, it should rotate the screen when you're using Windows. That doesn't necessarily work, however, when you're um, using Linux. I don't know. I can't really test it because it doesn't work right now on the prototype. Um, the pen does work. It can be a little bit finicky, I found in Linux. So I can do certain things with it, but sometimes when I try to click something, it uh, chooses actions faster than I would like. So it's a little bit easier to use the optical touch sensor and or the touch screen. So let's see if we can connect to the internet. I'm going to say I want to connect to my network. Type in the password and see what happens. All right, we're connected. Uh, optical touch sensor does work. I found that the left and right buttons can be a little bit finicky in various Linux operating systems. So instead, I'm just going to go ahead and move the cursor to where I want it to be and tap. Again, you could also use the touch screen, but it's a little bit less precise than it could be. And one thing you might notice here is that the, everything looks a little small on the screen because the display scaling is set to 100%. There might be uh, ways that you can adjust this, but the default Ubuntu 6, uh, 1810 settings don't necessarily uh, help you very much. So again, everything looks a little bit on the small side here, and it's not really touch friendly. It doesn't. Uh, Using Firefox, you sort of have to use the scroll bar to navigate. There is an on-screen keyboard, which I'm realizing looks pretty dark right now. And of course, you can use keyboard shortcuts. So let's go open a video, YouTube. So 
So audio and video and everything else seems to work just fine. Hi, this is Brian Linder with Little Muting, and this is a little laptop, or maybe more of a palm top. You can see how small it is. It's a little computer that... And we're scrolling 1080p. And we can pause. Should be able to exit full screen. There we go. Close, and let's try a different operating system. So Ubuntu, for the most part, works. Display scaling could be better, and you do need to manually rotate the screen. Power off. Next up, we're going to try Elementary OS 5, which is based on Ubuntu, but it has a different desktop environment. It looks a little bit more like a Mac. It's called Pantheon. Again, you're going to see that the Grub2 bootloader is going to be sideways. What did I tell you? But we just hit enter, try without installing, and a moment later it should bring up the operating system. And this one is a little bit different in the way that it works because uh, you don't necessarily need to open the terminal window and type anything in it to adjust the orientation. But there are some other things that you need to do. Um, so there's a graphical user interface that, uh, that comes in handy for making adjustments because of the way that the Pantheon desktop environment works. Now, since I'm not installing this to local storage, there's certain things I can't try because uh, I can't, there are certain things that you might need to reboot the system to try. But again, we're upside down. But if I open the settings, look for the one that says display, if I could read upside down, displays. There's a little widget there. It says that we're clockwise. So I'm going to go to counterclockwise and click apply. And everything is right side up. Let's keep this configuration. And we're good. Now in here you could also change the display scaling to pixel doubled. And that would make everything look a little bit larger and a little bit uh, easier to see on this small screen. But that would require a reboot. So I haven't really been able to test it. What I can tell you is that like Ubuntu, the left click button doesn't seem to want to work very well, but I can tap or use my fingers. So let's go ahead and connect to the internet again. Video. Sit through another ad and skip it. multitasking works. So elementary OS is a little bit of a winner here because we've again sort of got better access to uh, commands that should allow us to adjust the display issues. But for our final trick, we're going to try something a little bit different. Uh, on this drive, I've got something called Ubuntu Mate 18.10. This one's a little stuck in there. There we go. So this is based on Ubuntu, but it uses the Mate desktop environment. And there are custom versions of this operating system that are designed specifically for the GPD Pocket line of devices, including the GPD Pocket and the Pocket 2. This is not a GPD device, but it has a similar display. Again, Grub is sideways. It has a similar display, which means that it deals with some of the same issues um, in terms of the text being too small and the screen being flipped. So what you're going to notice here is as we boot this version of Ubuntu, uh, the splash screen will be sideways but the desktop will actually be the right side up. And out of the box, the scaling will be set in a way that's more comfortable to view, similar to the way that Windows is. So it's an eight inch 1920 by 1200 pixel display, which is why we're running into problems on operating systems that have 100% scaling. Everything looks really tiny when you have that many pixels per inch. 
But here, the pixels are larger, and the screen is the right side up. We can brighten the screen, dim the screen using the keyboard shortcuts. We can connect to the internet. Let's see how the pen works. Menu. I'm going to open the camera application to point out the fact that there is no camera. Pen support seems to be much better here than it is in other items. So for the most part, Ubuntu Mate 18.10 seems like a winner out of the box uh, when it comes to sort of out of the box support. So if I were going to try something and I was not a Linux expert, this is probably the one I would try. Uh, now this has happened to me at least once before though while testing this, which is I did something, I'm not entirely sure what, and I logged out. So uh, that is going to be the end of this experiment, but that's fine because this video was getting a little bit on the long side. So uh, you can find more details about the Top Joy Falcon at Lilliputing.com. Check out other videos in this series at YouTube uh, to find about performance and benchmarks and all that good stuff. This video, the point really was just to show you that it is possible to load some software besides Windows on the uh, on the notebook, and uh, Ubuntu Mate 18.10 is my favorite so far because out of the box, most things seem to work as long as you don't accidentally log out of the operating system like I just did. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and you can find more information about the Top Joy Falcon at Lilliputing.com. It's uh, going to be available soon for $3.99 and up during a Kickstarter campaign and uh, eventually it's supposed to have a list price of around $6.99.